dear students now we are going to learn a new chapter chapter number 20 organ systems in animals in this lesson we are going to learn about human digestive system excretory system and reproductive system cells are the basic fundamental units of all living organisms and group of cells join together to form the tissue and group of tissues are organized to form an organ and two or more organs join together to form an organ system there are a number of systems in our body a division of labor is found among these various organ systems let us see what are the various systems found in our body we have the integumentary system which consists of the organs skin and skin glands like sebaceous glands sweat glands etc and their function is to protect and excrete nitrogenous waste second system skeletal system it consists of the skull in our head region vertebral column our backbone sternum is the breastbone girdles are the regions where the limbs are attached and our limb limb bones are included in the skeletal system they give support shape and form to our body muscular system consists of the muscle fibers this contraction and relaxation of these muscular fibers result in the movement of various internal organs as well as our body nervous system comprises of the brain spinal cord and the nerves and they conduct the nerve impulses we are able to understand our environment through our nervous system and internally the informations are conducted or sensed only through this nervous system circulatory system consists of heart blood and blood vessels they help in the transportation of the respiratory gases oxygen and carbon dioxide nutritive substances and waste products respiratory system consists of the respiratory tract and the lungs helpful for breathing digestive system consists of the digestive tract and the digestive glands their functions are digestion absorption and ejection of the waste material excretory system consists of kidneys ureters urinary bladder and urethra they help in the elimination of the nitrogenous waste products from our body a reproductive system consists of testes in male and ovaries in female and they are helpful for the gamete formation and development of the secondary sexual characters sensory system consists of the eyes nose ears tongue and the skin they help to understand the senses like sight smell hearing taste and touch endocrine glands consist of the pituitary thyroid parathyroid adrenal pancreas pineal body thymus and the reproductive glands etc they are helpful for coordinating all the functions of our organ systems to the organ system that we are going to learn first is the digestive system through the digestive system we are able to take in food and digest and use it utilize it for our body activities there are five stages in the nutrition process they are ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection i repeat ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection what is ingestion this is a process of taking in food in second process the complex food molecules are broken by the enzymes into simpler ones it is called as digestion after digestion the simpler diffusible food particles will be absorbed by our intestine that is called absorption then these absorbed food material will be assimilated in our body and the unwanted waste material will be eliminated out of our body elimination of waste called ingestion
Alimentary canal starts with the mouth and it ends in the anus. And it consists of mouth, buccal cavity, phrynex, that is our thondi, esophagus, that is food pipe, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. Mouth leads to the buccal cavity. The jaws bear the teeth. And teeth are the hard structure which are meant for holding, cutting, grinding and crushing our food. And in human beings we are having two sets of teeth and so it is said to be dipiodont. In the childhood we are having one set of teeth. They are called as milk teeth. We will have only 20 number of teeth and they are temporary teeth. They will fall and they will be replaced by the permanent teeth and it will have about 32 number of teeth 16 on each jaw the tooth has a root and that is fitted into the gum this is the root of the tooth and so it is called as thecodont permanent teeth are of four types because we are having different types of permanent teeth it is said to be heterodont and the four types of tooth are incisors which are called as cutting or biting teeth and function is for cutting and biting they are 18 numbers in lower jaw 4 and the upper jaw 4 canines canines are the for the purpose of tearing and piercing our food flesh and they are 4 in numbers next we have the premolars which are for the purpose of grinding and crushing they are 18 numbers last finally we have the molars which are for crushing grinding and masticating our food nicely and they are 12 in numbers lower jaw has 633 three on both the sides and 6 on the upper jaw so the dental formula can be written as two incisors it is for the one half of the lower jaw two incisors one canine two premolars and three molars that is two one two three one side and two one two three another side so 16 into 2 32 number of tooth we are having that is in the adult permanent teeth in case of milk teeth it is only two one two incisors canine and molars that is 10 into 2 which is 20 number of milk teeth are all the animals have the teeth similar to us? No. They differ in every way. The teeth, the shape and the size and number also differs according to their food habits. If they are flesh eating animals, they will have the long canine teeth for tearing the flesh and to have it. What are salivary glands? There are three pairs of salivary glands which are present in our mouth cavity and they assist in the digestion of the food the three pairs of salivary glands are parotid glands sublingual glands and submandibular glands first one parotid gland it is the largest gland of our body it lies in the cheeks in front of our ears so you can see the parotid gland which is the largest gland in front of our ears the second gland is the sublingual glands and they are smaller in size and they are present beneath our tongue. This is the sublingual glands. The third one is the submandibular glands and they are present in the angle of our lower jaw. So here you can see the submandibular glands. And these salivary glands, they secrete a viscous fluid which is called saliva and approximately 1.5 liters of saliva is produced every day and they contain an important enzyme called tylin or amylase and this tylin will convert the starch which is a polysaccharide into maltose which is a disaccharide and saliva also contain antibacterial enzymes called lysozymes that will kill the bacteria that enters through our food the next organ is called tongue. Tongue is a muscular sensory organ. It is meant for tasting the food it, because it has the taste buds and they will recognize all the types of taste. 
they help to masticate the food in the buccal cavity and by which it becomes a bolus the tongue will roll the food and makes it combined with the saliva and mucus by which it is becoming softer so that it can pass through the pharynx and esophagus easily so during swallowing epiglottis it is it is a muscular flap like structure which will be at the tip of our glottis that is at the beginning of our trachea and that will close the trachea and prevents the food from entering into the trachea or the windpipe epiglottis is very important what is the function of epiglottis epiglottis will prevent the food being entering into our windpipe or trachea pharynx pharynx is the next region of our food pipe so this is this is the tondai in common we say and it is a membrane lined cavity that lies behind nose and mouth the pharynx will connect the nose and the mouth to the esophagus region next region is called as esophagus the so esophagus is otherwise called food pipe it is a muscular membranous canal which is about 22 cm in length here you can see the esophagus that continues down from the pharynx and esophagus will connect the stomach with our buccal cavity the stomach is a wide j shaped structure muscular organ that lies between the esophagus and the small intestine and there are gastric glands in the inner walls of the stomach that will secrete the gastric juice that helps in the digestion of food and this gastric juice is colorless which is highly acidic kills the germs in our food it contains mucus and the enzymes like renin and pepsin renin in infants and pepsin in adult the inactive pepsinogen is converted into active pepsin which will help in the digestion of protein of our food and the hydrochloric acid in the stomach will convert it into acidic medium which kills the bacteria that is swallowed along with the food the mucus which is secreted will protect the walls of the stomach from the corroding action of the acidic medium the churning of the food along with the gastric juices will convert the bolus into semi digested food called chyme the chyme will move from the stomach into the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter next we have small intestine small intestine is the longest part of our alimentary canal and it is a coiled tube measuring about 5 to 7 meters in length and there are three parts in the small intestine they are duodenum jejunum and ileum duodenum is the first part which is a c shaped structure and receives the bile juice through the bile duct from the liver and the pancreatic juice from the pancreas jejunum is the middle region of the small intestine the secretion of the small intestine is the intestinal juice and this contains the enzymes like sucrase maltase lactase and lipase Ileum is the last and the longest part of the small intestine and it opens into the large intestine. It contains minute finger like projections called villi. On the inner wall of the small intestine there are uh, minute finger like projections called villi and this will absorb the digested food. There are approximately 4 million villi are present in the ileum region and internally villi will contain the blood capillaries and lacteal tubes the small intestine serves both for the digestion as well as the absorption and it receives the bile from the liver pancreatic juice from the pancreas in the duodenal region and the intestinal glands secrete the intestinal juice so all the three will help in converting the food into finer absorbable particles and the villi will absorb the digested food Liver is the largest digestive gland and it is reddish brown in color. It is divided into two lobes, the right and the left lobe. The right lobe is larger than the left lobe. So it secretes the bile juice and it is temporarily stored in the gall bladder. The liver cells secrete the bile juice which is temporarily stored in the gall bladder and bile is released in small amount into the small intestine when food enters it. and this bile contains bile salts and bile pigments 
bile salts are sodium glycolate and sodium taroglycolate and bile pigments include bilirubin and biliviridin bile salts helps in the emulsification of fat and it convert the large fat droplets into smaller ones what are the functions of the liver so liver controls the blood sugar and the amino acid levels it synthesizes fetal red blood cells in the fetus the red blood cells are synthesized by the liver and it produces fibrinogen prothrombin which are used for the clotting of blood this liver will destroy the rbc red blood cells it stores iron copper vitamin a and vitamin d it produces heparin which is an anticoagulant which will prevent the clotting of blood inside the blood vessel in it excrete toxic as well as the metallic poisons it will eliminate it will filter and eliminate the metallic poisons and the toxic substances from our body and it will ex it will help in excreting it out detoxification of the substances including drugs and alcohol also takes place in the liver the next gland is called the pancreatic gland or pancreas it is a lobed leaf like gland and it is situated in between the stomach and the duodenum exocrine part of it will secrete pancreatic juice that contains three enzymes namely lipase trypsin and amylase and this will act on fat protein and starch respectively on the upper surface of the pancreatic gland it has the eyelids of longer hands and they act as the endocrine gland cells there are two types of cells in the endocrine part of it they are alpha cells and the beta cells alpha cells secrete glucagon and beta cells secrete insulin the intestinal gland secretion is called as succus entericus and it contains the enzymes like maltase lactase sucrase lipase and they all act in an alkaline medium from the duodenum the food will be moved into the ileum where the digested food will be absorbed by the villi what is absorption of food absorption is a process by which the nutrients are obtained by the body and it is absorbed by the villi it is circulated throughout the body by the blood and the limb assimilation of food assimilation means the incorporation or intaking of the absorbed food material into our tissues into our tissues as our internal components and the final product of the fat digestion is fatty acids and glycerol and they are again converted into fat and it is stored in our body as adipose tissue the sugar is converted into simple sugars and they are utilized for our energy requirement the amino acids are utilized to synthesize different proteins required for our body the next is the large intestine large intestine we have the unabsorbed and the undigested food and that will pass through the cecum colon and rectum and it extends for about 1.5 meter in length and the cecum is a small blind pouch like structure situated at the junction of the small and the large intestine from this blind end there is a finger like structure which is called as vermiform appendix it is a vestigial organ which means functionless in human beings but they are very much functioning in the cattle the large intestine consists of colon rectum and anus colon is broader than the ileum and it passes through the abdomen on a right ascending colon it is this is the ascending colon then below the stomach it runs as the transverse colon and towards the left it uh, descends down as the descending colon this will be continued as the rectum and opens to the exterior by the anus it is kept closed by the ring of muscles called anal sphincter that will open to pass out the stools the undigested and the unassimilated portion of the food ingested will come out to the anal aperture as a fecal matter and this process is called ejection or the defecation now let us summarize the process of digestion 
the salivary gland produces saliva which has styrin amylase enzyme and that will act on the starch and convert it into maltose gastric gland produces two enzymes namely pepsin and renin pepsin will break down the proteins to peptones and renin in infant will act on the milk protein or cheesinogen and helps in the curdling of milk and convert the cheesinogen into cheesin pancreas secrete pancreatic amylase trypsin chymotrypsin and pancreatic lipase pancreatic amylase act on starch to convert it into maltose trypsin act on proteins and peptones and convert it into peptides and amino acids chymotrypsin convert the protein to proteoses peptones polypeptide tri and dipeptides pancreatic lipase will emulsify the fat and convert the fat into fatty acid and gl glycerol intestinal gland secretions like maltase will break up the maltose into glucose and it uh, lactase may break down the lactose to glucose and galactose and sucrase break down sucrose into glucose and fructose and lipase enzyme will break down the fat to fatty acids and glycerols so here the process of digestion the food is in ingested by the mouth ingestion which is called as ingestion it passes through the buccal cavity pharynx esophagus and stomach the digestion of the food takes place in the small intestine it is absorbed absorption takes place absorption of the simpler substances digested food material is taking place in the small intestine and the large intestine water is absorbed water and mineral salts are absorbed and uh, through the anus the waste material will be eliminated out that is called the ejection metabolic waste are continuously produced by human body by the physiological activities of our body and they are nitrogenous toxic waste substance they should not accumulate in our body and they are eliminated periodically by our excretory system human excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys and this produces urine and it contains pair of ureter which will conduct the urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder and the urinary bladder will empty the urine through urethra outside the excretory organs of human beings are the kidney skin and the lungs skin eliminates a small amount of water urea and salts in the form of sweat and lungs also eliminate carbon dioxide and water vapor by exhaling skin is the outermost covering of the body it stretches all over the body in the form of a thin layer and it accounts for 15 percentage of our body weight there are many glands in our skin and they will help in the elimination of waste through perspiration the body's normal temperature is 37 degree celsius when it gets hot the sweat glands will secrete the sweat which contains ammonia urea lactic acid and salts and this will helps to maintain our body temperature the sweat passes through the pores in the skin and get evaporated kidneys are bean shaped organs which are reddish brown in color and they lie on either side of the vertebral column in the abdominal cavity attached to the dorsal body wall The right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney due to the presence of the liver in the right side. And each kidney measures about 11 cm long and 5 cm wide and 3 cm in thickness. The kidney is covered by a thin layer of fibrous connective tissue which is called as renal capsule and a layer of adipose tissue and fibrous membrane. internally the kidney is divided into outer darker cortex and inner paler medulla both the regions of the kidney contains uniferous tubules called nephrons in the medullary region they have the medullary pyramids or the renal pyramids and their base will be adjacent to the cortex the inner concave side of the kidney has a notch which is called as hilum and through this hilum the blood vessels nerves as well as the ureter will enter into the kidney ureters are the thin muscular tubes that will come out from the renal pelvis and they conduct the urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder 
the ureter will carry the urine from kidneys to the urinary bladder by the peristaltic movement of its wall the urinary bladder is a sac like structure that will collect the urine and stores it temporarily and it lies in the pelvic cavity of our abdomen urethra is a membranous tube that is guarded by a muscle called urethral sphincter muscle which can open and close the opening of the urethra for passing out the urine which is called as micturition or urination what are the functions of the kidney kidneys are helpful to maintain the electrolyte balance of our body they help to maintain the fluid content the amount of water present in our body they regulate the acid base balance of blood maintain osmotic pressure in the blood and the tissues and kidneys help to retain the important plasma constituents like glucose amino acids and they will not allow them to get eliminated by the kidneys nephrons are the structural and functional unit of kidneys and each kidney consists of more than 1 million nephrons nephrons has two regions which are renal corpuscle or the malpighian corpuscle and the renal tubule the renal corpuscle consists of the bowman's capsule bowman's capsule contains a bunch of capillaries which is called as glomerulus the blood enters into the bowman's capsule through the afferent arteriole and leaves out through the efferent arterioles the bowman's capsule continues down as the renal tubule and this has three regions namely the proximal convoluted tubule u shaped henle's loop and the distal convoluted tubule the distal convoluted tubule will open into the collecting tubule and this will collect the urine from the nephrons and lead it into the ureter from ureters it reaches the urinary bladder and from there urine will be expelled out through urethra the process of urine formation include three stages they are glomerular filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion in the first stage that is glomerular filtration the urine is filtered it is formed by the filtration of the blood through the epithelial cells of the glomerulus and the bowman's capsule and this is called ultra filtration of glomerulus and it is affected by the bowman's capsule this filtrate is called as glomerular filtrate and it contains both essential and non essential components then this glomerular filtrate is passed on through this proximal convoluted tubule and here the tubular reabsorption takes place as it passes through the renal tubule the tubular reabsorption takes place the filtrate in the proximal tube contains the essential substances like glucose amino acids vitamin sodium potassium bicarbonates and water and these are all reabsorbed by the process called selective reabsorption the third stage is called tubular secretion here once again the substances like h plus ion and k plus ion will be secreted into the tubules and by which by which the urine becomes hypertonic it, which contains more amount of solute than the solvent after it becomes hypertonic the urine passes through the pelvis region into the ureter then it is collected in the urinary bladder when the urinary bladder becomes full the urine will be expelled out through the urethra by micturition a healthy person excretes about 1 to 2 liters of urine per day and this is a flow chart in the glomerulus ultra filtration of the blood take place and the filtrate contains some essential substances from the proximal convoluted tubule it passes through the descending and ascending limbs of the loop of henle where the reabsorption as well as the tubular secretion takes place after which a hypertonic urine will be collected by the collecting tubule which will be passed on through the ureter to the urinary bladder from there it will be expelled out through the urethra dialysis or artificial kidney when the kidney loses its efficiency 
or filtering the toxic substances from the blood. We call this condition as kidney failure or renal failure. When renal failure takes place, the toxic substances, the waste material get accumulated in the body. For this condition, an artificial kidney is used to filter the blood of the patient. The patient is said to be put on dialysis and the process of purifying the blood by the artificial kidney is called hemodialysis. So when the renal failure happens in a patient, they cannot be treated by drugs or dialysis. These patients are advised for kidney transplantation. First kidney transplantation was performed successfully in USC by Joseph E. Murray and his colleagues in 1954. This transplantation was done between the identical twins Ronald and Richard Herrick. The next system we are going to learn about is reproductive system. There is distinct sexual dimorphism in human beings. That means male and female are visibly different in their physical buildup, external genital organs and secondary sexual characters. The reproductive system of male and female consists of many organs and they are classified into primary and the secondary sex organs. The prim primary sex organs are called as gonads and gonads produces the gametes or the sex cells and they also secrete the sex hormones. The secondary sex organs includes the genital ducts and the glands and they help in the transportation of the gametes and enable the process of reproduction. Reproductive organs become functional only at the maturity, only after attaining sexual maturity. In males it happens at the age of 13 to 14 years and in females at the age of 11 to 13 years and this age is called as age of puberty. The secondary sexual characters are produced by the influence of the hormones. Human male reproductive system consists of testis which is the primary organ, scrotum, vas deferens, urethra, penis and accessory glands. A pair of testis lies outside the abdominal cavity and these testis are called as male gonads and they produce the male gametes called sperms. They also produce the sex hormones testosterone. Along the inner side of each testis there is coiled structure which is called as epididymis. The testis also contain cetoly cells and they provide nourishment for the developing sperms. Scrotum is the loose pouch sac like structure which is divided internally into right and left by a muscular partition and the two testes lie in the respective scrotal sac. It contains many nerves and the blood vessels and scrotum acts as a thermoregulator organ because sperms can be produced only at the lower temperature of 1 to 3 degrees Celsius which is lower than the normal body temperature. Vas difference. Vas difference is a small straight tube which carries the sperm from the testis to the seminal vesicle and seminal vesicle secrete fluid which is rich in fructose, calcium and enzymes. Fructose act as the source of energy for the sperm. Vas difference along with the seminal vesicle will open into the ejaculatory duct. This will expel the sperm and its secretion from the seminal vesicle into the urethra. Urethra contain penis. The accessory glands which are associated with the male reproductive system are the seminal vesicle, prostate gland and corpus gland. The secretion of these glands forms the seminal fluid that mix with the sperm to form the semen and this provides the nutrition and helps in the transportation of sperms. The process of formation of the sperm by the testis is called as spermatogenesis. Female reproductive system it consists of ovaries, this is the primary sex organs, oviduct, uterus and vagina. The ovaries are a pair of almond shaped structure that lies in the lower part of our abdominal cavity. It lies near the kidneys in female. 
Ovaries are the female gonads and they produce female gametes called ovum or egg. And they also secrete the sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone. Mature ovary will have a number of ova at different developmental stage. Next we have the fallopian tube. Fallopian tubes are the oviduct. They are paired tubes that originate from the uterus. One on either side. The terminal part of the fallopian tube is funnel shaped with finger like projections called fimbriae. And this fimbriae that lies near the ovary will pick up the ovum that is released from this ovary and it will push it into the fallopian tube. Next structure is called uterus. Uterus is pear shaped. It is muscular hollow structure that lies in the pelvic cavity. It lies between the urinary bladder and the rectum. The development of the fetus takes place in the uterus. The lower part of the uterus is called the cervix and this leads to the vagina. The uterus narrows down into the hollow structure which is called as vagina. It is a muscular tube like structure. It connects the cervix to the external genitalia. It receives the sperms and act as a birth canal during childbirth or parturition. The process of formation of ovum in the ovary is called oogenesis. <laughs>